Shalom. We are entering into the season of Shabbat, and I couldn't be more excited. So as we enter into this season, what better way than to highlight some of the key insights that God has embedded into this season? We will revisit a snippet that my father, Rabbi Matthew, gave for this season. It's just a quick synopsis, but we feel that it gives you a good overview as we enter into this season to know what we want to tune our hearts into and what we're open to receive from the Lord. Stay tuned afterwards because I would like to pray with you so that we can enter into the fullness of this season together. So here are some Shabbat insights as we enter into the season of Shabbat or Pentecost. Shalom. I'm Rabbi Matthew Spivey with the Ministry of Shofar. And today I'd like to talk to you about a fascinating season that's rapidly approaching us. A season known as Shavuot, or more commonly known as Pentecost, a Greek word that means 50. Interestingly, Shavuot, which comes from the Hebrew, it also finds its origin in the Hebrew root, Shuva, which means weeks. Specifically, the seven weeks following the day of Pesach. God had defined in scripture that they should count the 49 days or the seven weeks following Pesach. And for this reason, it's also called the Feast of Weeks. Shabbat marks the conclusion of the counting of the Omar. That's what the 49 de days are defined as, the counting of the Omar. But it's a time period that we call and recognize as a season of character building. Shavuot is one of the three pilgrimage festivals that God has ordained in Scripture. The first one being Pesach, or Passover. The second being Shavuot, or Pentecost. And the third being Sukkot, or Tabernacles. It goes, Shavuot itself goes by many other descriptive names. It's also called the Feast of Harvest. And it comes from that because it comes at the end of the, uh, the wheat harvest. You know, this, in the spring it begins with, this, with the barley harvest and concludes with the wheat harvest in the fall. Shavuot falls in that fall and um, is known as the Feast of Harvest, a celebrated time of our of provision. This also goes by the name of the season of revelation. And that speaks toward the giving of God's Torah. It's when God gave them the wisdom and the enlightenment to walk skillfully on earth, to have dominion well and steward well of all that he's created us to be. It's also called the season of the betrothal or a season of wedding. For that's how they felt as what had happened when God brought them to the mountain. Not only did he give them the Torah, they looked up on the Torah as like a marriage contract that we would receive. It's like the vows, or in Hebrew, the ketubah, that defined uh, their covenant relationship. So it's known as the season of the betrothal. Shabbat is also known as a season of the goel. <laughs> and goel is just a Hebrew word that means redeemer. It means one who comes in, a near kinsman, to redeem and restore one who has lost everything. For this reason, we find because of the harvest season and because of the spirit of the Redeemer, the book of Ruth is read every Shabbat. Because it speaks in terms of what Boaz was to that family. When Boaz married Ruth, he not only redeemed her and Noemi, <laughs> uh, her mother-in-law, he redeemed them and restored them. They had lost everything. In Shabbat, during this season, we look upon Adonai, Yahweh, Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, as our Goel, our Redeemer. For he restores our inheritance and he makes us whole. But I think one of the most powerful insights is when Yeshua shares his excitement at the Seder table. In Luke it says that he says, With desire of desires have I longed to have this meal with you. For when one tries to define that excitement that was at the table, he knew after Pesach, the next coming season 
of power was going to be Shavuot. He viewed Shavuot as a season of empowerment, for he told them not to leave that place until they were filled with power from on high. He looked upon it as a season of equipping that they can walk with skill and force. Whole. He looked upon it as a season of the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. A powerful season, Shavuot. You know, traditionally, during this time, if you happen to walk into any gathering or into a synagogue, you notice that during the season of Shavuot, uh, a lot of greenery, flowers, and plants are displayed. And that's a reenactment of what transpired on Mount Sinai when the Torah came. They said when the, the potency and the power fell from heaven and the illumination was given to man, that the rocks themselves, the mountain itself, fell into full bloom. Uh, flowers bloomed. Greenery filled the mountain. So they emulate that by decorating the sanctuary or the gathering place or the synagogue with greenery and flowers. And also during this particular time, there's a strong tradition where dairy products were eaten during this season as well. And the reason for that is because the Torah is looked upon as like the honey and the milk of God's word. It is the sustenance that fills us, that sustains us, that holds us, that guides us. Milk under our tongue. Yeah, Shabbat is an incredible season. One that filled the body of Christ as a whole should stand in full expectation now. Or as the scripture says, even so, Lord, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. Shabbat, a season of empowerment, enlightenment, a season of equipping that makes us whole. Incredible season. Shalom. Be blessed and be ready with full of expectations of all that God's going to do for you in this season. May you be blessed. Amen and amen. So, Father, as we enter into your appointed time, the season of Shabbat, this feast of weeks, the season of Shabbat, Pentecost. Father, as we have come through your redemptive work done in Pesach and then through the 50 days of our character building, Father, where you were taking things out of us and addressing things, Father, purifying us so that your spirit can truly flow through us in, in a way that you desire, unhindered and in full force. Unhindered and in full force. Father, I just ask that you have your way in all of us. Lord, we don't want to come into this season as a religious ritual. Father, fill us afresh. Father, let us experience the full power of you, of your spirit, in a way that we have never experienced before. And let it not be a one moment encounter and then revert back to where we were. Father, no, let us move forward. Let us advance. Let us continue to grow. Let us continue to operate in your kingdom in the way that you desire, in the way that you originally intended, the way that you created us to function. Father, have your way, and may you be glorified in all that we do. And may this season be realized in its fullness in our hearts, in our lives, in our spirits, that we may reflect you and truly operate as your body, as your ecclesia, in your kingdom. In the glorious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Shabbat. Receive the fullness of this season. We love you and may you have all God's best. Shalom. Mm -hmm.